basketball is the second most popular sport in the world. The NBA is the most popular basketball league in the world. It probably has the most exciting offseason, the most exciting trade deadline, tons of player movement, all that good stuff. So, if you're a fan of the NBA, if you love the NBA, but you aren't sure how to bet on it, just please keep watching this short video that'll teach you the basics of how to bet on the NBA. So when you're betting on the NBA, there are three main markets that you bet on. Number one, money line. Number two, point spread. Number three is the point total. And there are also player props that you can bet on as well. And I will get into each of these individually, give you details and all that good stuff. So the first one I'm going to talk about is money line betting. Money line is the easiest one to bet. It's the easiest way to know whether your bet won or lost. All you're doing is you're betting on the winner of the outcome of the game. That's it. Do they win straight up? Could be overtime, could be nine overtimes, could be straight up, doesn't matter, just do they win? So when you're betting on the money line of the game, you are either betting on the favorite, which is gonna have a minus next to it for the odds, or you are betting on the underdog, which is gonna have a plus next to it when you're looking at the odds. So to show you what it looks like when betting on the money line, I have pulled up Caesars Sportsbook for you. So as you can see here, it's labeled money line. Um, the plus money means that this is the underdog. The minus means that they're the favorite. So it looks like for this game, it's the Pistons at the Wizards. The Pistons are plus 170. The Wizards are minus 200. So what that means is if you wanted to bet on the Pistons money line, you would risk $100 to profit $170, giving you a total payout of 270. Now, in the opposite, if you wanted to bet the Wizards, you would have to risk $200 to profit $100, so your total payout would be 300. So obviously, if you can guess the underdog right, it is very profitable to be betting on the underdogs for a money line bet. So next up after a money line bet is a spread bet. So unlike the money line where you're just predicting the winner straight up, the spread bet you are picking on a team to cover the spread. The spread is calculated by the odds makers. They're very good at this. Um, so for the favorite, not only do they have to win straight up, but they have to cover whatever the calculated spread is for this game. For the opposite, for the underdog, they don't have to win straight up. They just have to cover whatever the spread is. So now let's go to that same real life example, Pistons at Wizards to talk about how a spread bet works. Um, so no longer are we looking at the money line, but we are looking at the spread. So the Pistons, who are the underdog in this game, are four and a half point underdogs. That means that as long as the Pistons win or lose by less than five, then you will win this spread bet. So if the Pistons lose by four, then you'll win the bet. Conversely, if the Pistons lose by seven, then you will have lost that bet. Similarly, for the Wizards, um, as long as they win by five or more, then you will win this spread bet. So a lot of times when people are betting on the spread, they use that as a way to back the favorite without having to sacrifice as much odds as the money line. So if you think the Wizards are going to win by five or more, it would make sense to bet on the Wizards spread as opposed to the Wizards money line. So the last of the three main markets when betting on the NBA is a totals bet. Um, all you're doing on this one, you're not betting on the winner or the loser in any capacity. You're just betting on how many points are scored. So when you are betting on a total, you're betting on an over or you're betting on an under. The total is calculated the same way that the spread is by the odds makers. Um, and if you look at the total and you think more points are going to be scored, then you would bet on the over of that total. Conversely, if you think that less points are going to be scored than what the total is listed at, then you would bet on the under. So again, providing a real life example for a totals bet, looking at this Pistons at Wizards game, looks like the total here listed on the far right is at 218 and a half. So that means that the odds makers have calculated that the most likely scenario for this game is that there will be between 218 and 219 points scored. So if you think that 219 or more points are going to be scored, you would bet on the over. Opposite for the under, if you think that 218 or less points are going to be scored, you would bet on the under. All right, so now that we have talked about the three main markets you can bet on for the NBA, money line, spread, and total, the last thing I wanted to talk about, which has gained incredible popularity, is player prop betting. So over the past couple years, betting on player props has become incredibly popular. 
probably because of the rise in fantasy sports. But when you bet on a player prop, that means the outcome of the game has no impact on the outcome of your bet. You can bet on the point total, assist total, rebound total, plus much more. But the important thing to note is that, again, the, the game total, the money line, the spread, and none of that stuff matters if you're betting on an NBA player prop. So again, I have Caesar Sportsbook pulled up to show you how to bet on an NBA player prop. Um, all you got to do is identify the game. So in this case, we'll look at the same Pistons at Wizards game. You click into it. You see these buttons up top. Obviously, the one for player props, you click right here. And then all the player props that you can bet on become available. Double-double, yes or no. Triple-double, yes or no. Points, assists, rebounds, all that good stuff. Um, and betting on a player prop is is similar to a game total in that you're betting on an over or an under or in the double, double, or triple, double case, yes or no. But, so let's look at the total points example. So Kyle Kuzma, let's say that you think he's going to have a good game. So his point total is listed at 21 and a half over under. Uh, Pistons have a bad defense. You think Kyle Kuzma is going to score 22 points or more. You would bet on this over 21 and a half. Obviously, the opposite is true if you think it's going to have a bad game. So let's say the Pistons, you think they're going to have a good defense for Kyle Kuzma. You don't think he's going to have a good game. You would bet on his under point total. And as long as he scores 21 points or fewer, your bet would hit. So player props can be fun because obviously the outcome of the game has no impact in them. So let's say you just want to watch a player. You think a specific player is going to have a good game. Then you could just take his player prop and not even worry about the game outcome itself. And that is your beginner's guide on how to bet on the NBA. So we've covered money line bets. We've covered point spread bets. We covered game total bets. And then lastly, we covered player props. So if you like this video, if you want to start betting on the NBA, shoot us a like, share the video with your friends, and make sure to tune in to other future videos where we give out betting advice, we give out betting picks, all that good stuff. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, have a good one.